Hello and welcome to our special show, Power Play. I am Pranjal Sharma. This is the show where we talk to personalities who influence and make critical policy level decisions across the country. Today we are going to be talking to Sam Petroda. He was the person who helped bring in the telecom revolution in the country. He also guided the government's policy on knowledge as the chairman of the National Knowledge Commission. Today he is Prime Minister's advisor on public information infrastructure and innovation. There are several other hats that he wears. Sam, thanks very much for being with us uh, on this show. Thank the you for inviting me. first question that I want to know is that we are living in an age of uh, information revolution. But still, uh, we are looking at a person like you who is heading body which is advising the Prime Minister on public information infrastructure. One would have thought that there is enough public information infrastructure in the country. Well, let's first understand that in the last 20 years, telecom has changed from 2 million phones to 800 million. And as a result, we are a nation of a connected billion. This is a huge accomplishment. Then the next question is, how do we strategize going forward? Now that we are all connected, do we go about doing the same thing over and over again as we have been doing in the past? or we take advantage of this connectivity to do things differently. So I've been saying that the first phase of the telecom revolution is over. The second phase of telecom revolution is yet to begin. And that's where I think the need for public information infrastructure becomes important. How do you define public information infrastructure? See, today, a lot of our information is in manual forms. It's sort of in files. In a sense, many people can relate to the fact that our information in government is locked up in Naravali file. Everywhere you look around, there is a huge need to organize, structure, distribute, deliver information in a different form. But you know, every state government and every central department, central government department has been talking of e-governance for a few years now. Hasn't that reached anywhere? I don't think so. Personally, I think there has been a lot of discussion on e-governance, a lot of money has been spent probably in buying hardware, doing some software here and there. But the need of the hour is to create robust sort of cloud computing based services. So the idea is to really democratize information. To do that, we need to essentially connect our panchayats. So we have two major programs underway. One is called National Knowledge Network, which came out of Knowledge Commission. Dr. Chidambaram is heading this. And the idea is to connect all our universities, all our R&D labs to 40 gigabit bandwidth, including all our colleges. This will allow our people to do better research, collaborate better and really use technology in a very, very different way for education and R&D. Next phase is to connect 250,000 panchayats to again optical fiber. If we can bring fiber to panchayat, we can begin to change the way we manage panchayat. All of these things require new information order. And we haven't given too much thought to it. We also need standards. Take, for example, e-governance. Everybody is doing their own thing. We can't allow every state to go off and doing their own things. We've got to create standards for birth certificate, death certificate, land records. A police report filed in Kerala is very different from the police report filed in Delhi. There has to be some 
standards. But you know, when you talk about creating a standard, you're talking about completely changing the paradigm of governance in many of ways. Of course, of course, that's where innovation and that's comes a huge in. challenge. Of course, but you got to do it because you must realize that all of the processes we have today were mainly designed during British era and we have perfected it over a period of time. You're, you're looking at uh, taking on the entire governance system, Sam. It is not that I am taking on anything. I think this the is idea. what we need to do as a This nation. new idea will have to run because into… Because we can't go into 21st century with 19th century mindset and 20th century processes. All our processes are obsolete, essentially. We need to redefine, re-engineer all our processes. Let me come to the physical infrastructure and then I want to talk to you about the management of it and how it's going to be working. The rough figure uh, which has been mentioned uh, is about 30,000 crores worth of investment for the National Optic Fiber uh, Network. Who is going to fund this? Is there a role for the private sector in this? There is a role for the private sector in building it, some of it. But apparently private sector has not funded it. As a result, we have large amount of funding with USO fund because they didn't go into rural areas. If they had gone into rural areas, we won't have USO fund with that much of capital. So we have US of fund that we can use. Is there enough money? There is never enough money to do these kinds of things. But I think there is good enough money to get started. But the requirement is going to be very large. Again, the devil lies in the implementation and the details. It'll so get done. who will be implementing and creating this network? Different people will be doing different things. Like Dr. Chidambaram was responsible for building National Knowledge Network along with other people, you know, Dr. Garola, Dr. Raghavan and others, uh, Dr. Mani. And I think they've done a terrific job. Dr. Kasuri Rangan is focused on GIS. Nandan is focused on UID. So I think different people are doing different But the things. actual network link, I believe there's going to be authority, a uh, national uh, optic fiber authority are, that will be implementing we are, it. We are thinking of setting up a special purpose vehicle consisting of multiple players like BSNL, Railtel, uh, Power Grid, NIC and others, you know, DOT and all. And really create, in a sense, an environment where we don't duplicate anything. You must realize that we have a million kilometer of optical fiber underground. Already. Already, which is huge asset. And which is and underutilized. Totally underutilized. Because you see, when we laid that fiber, we assume that the bandwidth capacity would be 50 megabit. Today, by changing thermal equipment, you can go to 40 gigabit. Next year, 100 gigabit. So that's the gold in the ground. How do we use that? What is the opportunity for the private sector here? Because you said so far they haven't played a role, perhaps because they found that Private sector has laid cables only to connect urban areas. So if there's a cable required from Bombay to Delhi, I'm sure there are private sectors with that capacity. But you go to districts and blocks, unfortunately, it is only BSNL. Is there a business opportunity for them here? Sure, they can lay cables. Sure, they can do a lot of subcontracting. And the idea is to create open environment. So when the cable goes to Panchayat, our idea is to create a tower. And that tower can be shared by everybody. What happens is that the private sector, when it comes in, it brings a sense of scale and efficiency, which the government agencies cannot match. They're so if, if... First of all, that's not true. Okay, I won't go that far. Okay, I know everybody likes to toot, you know, private sector horn, but I won't go that far. But that's okay. We need private players. I'm not saying... We need public-private partnership. But if there is no private player with optical fiber in block level, it says it all. But Why didn't you lay it down? But if, if you uh, put out a tender or a bid for... Uh, but the no, cable is already there, so why should I put out a tender? If cable is already there, BSNL has laid it out, so BSNL should get the job. It's that simple. Now, private players want their job saying, wait a minute, where were you before? If you were not there, whosoever is closest to the point should do it because that's a low-cost solution. Our job or our mission is to connect 250,000 panchayats by using all existing asset, public, private, BSNL, Railtel, doesn't matter, with minimum incremental cost and then open it up for everybody to use it, which is really great. Who will manage this network? This network would be managed by 
special purpose vehicle. Yeah. And then a lot of these questions will be answered as we go along. Because, you, you know, uh, the, the actual implementation of these policies at panchayat level are the domain of state governments and there is sure. a lot of divergence sure. of uh, views sure. and capabilities sure. at the state but level. But as soon as we create open platform, they will then learn how to use it. Okay. See, once we create connectivity, we then need to create access for everybody. Once we create access for everybody, we need to bring hardware there, software there, developed applications. So rural ministry will come in, panchayat ministry will come in, water, education, health, state government, federal government, everyone will be able to create the ecosystem required to use that. So we talked about resurgence of Bengal. To me, it should be the gateway to the East. Anybody coming from East looking to India should just look at Calcutta and don't go beyond that. We should be able to provide lots of needs right there.